or anything pulse chain related. But I, I was also going to suggest that we discuss like some strategies as a community, you know, as a guild, so that we can strengthen even more these liquidity pools and, and the protocols. So go ahead, Derek. Yep. Hey guys. So um, I'm still driving right now. So can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. You good? Okay. So um. Obviously, the hottest thing today was um, Pulse launch, as the fair launch for that was um, earlier today at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So I did get a chance to um, send my tokens to that address, and um, now I just got to wait, or we just got to wait um, two weeks post fair launch to receive our tokens. So um, I'm really excited for that project specifically because there's been a lot of hype, and there's been a lot of um, attention being drawn to that project. I know one of the tweets that I saw was that within the first 18 minutes, there was over $3 million that got sent to um, the deposit address that was provided. So I thought that was incredible. So I would have to see like more of the specs that come out or the stats that come out like overall because um, Pulse Launch had also mentioned that they were already looking to be sold out right away. So, you know, this is one of those projects where people aren't messing around. So I just wanted to make sure that I got in really early to it. So I'll pretty much say that about Pulse launch, but in terms of the latest um, Pulse Lorian launch, which was Ewok, totally caught me by surprise. I know that I had a super busy week this week, and um, for some reason, I felt that it was a stealth launch. Like, I don't know how true that is, because I know typically there's like... Um, I guess more of an advanced notice given out, especially with respect to some of the other projects that have launched. And I know I'm partially blaming myself because I wasn't really in the telegram this week. So it's something that I could have easily missed. So as much as I would have liked to get in right at the bottom, um, I still took a position earlier today because I took a look at the chart and saw that um, it was a pretty nice dip from the first top that was made. So I'm still very happy with my position with respect to um, getting into Ewok and, of course, getting um, the passive teddy bear. So um, I guess I just want a little more clarity as to um, the launch of Ewok and how I felt that it was a little bit different like to me it felt like it was a stealth launch because it totally took me by surprise but i of course could have missed something there yep uh, it was stealth it was a stealth launch um and then um mostly to give like people and uh it's 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 one thing we're always trying to experiment like different ways of launching and see what what works best but this was to give people more of an opportunity the people who are really you know involved in the community and pay attention to the telegram and you know connected to the twitter uh give them an opportunity to snag in like a good position earlier without you know sometimes all of that like bot action and like whales that come in and we actually noticed that it did work pretty well uh when it launched and it had that anti-whale feature and it did stay around at, like a, at a very, very, very thin liquidity and at a very low price, uh, you know, giving, giving pretty much a really good opportunity for anybody to get in and snag a nice position before it actually started moving up. But with all of these protocols, they're just so new and it's just so undervalued, really, that, you know, it's, it's the liquidity. It's, it's, there's, there's so much room for growth that, you know, even get, getting a position now as you did it's 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 good i also bought some today yeah that's really awesome um and like i said i'm glad that i was able to get in on the dip because um just compared to how high it went initially for that first top and then seeing where the price was today i'm like you know what i'm still gonna take a position because at the end of the day i'm trying to get a small piece of the pie as we were talking about in the last space because realistically we don't need to have the biggest bag of any one two or three tokens like it's just nice to have a small slice of every pie 
that's coming out because in the grand scheme of things, everything is going to work together and com- and compound on each other. Because um, what I also noticed, this was um, already mentioned, but when Pulse Chain was pumping really hard, I noticed that um, all the other um, Pulse Lorian tokens and things like that were pumping even harder against Pulse Chain. So that was really awesome to see on that front. And it just got me excited about um it got me excited about how things are going to move going forward like when we really get deeper into this bull run so that's why at the end of the day i'm just really excited about being in this ecosystem and just um seeing the growth that is being observed already but Um, As you mentioned, like each of these projects are heavily undervalued and it's really worth it to get exposure into these projects early so that once we do get more into the bull run, it's like for those who hold and for those who stay true to their conviction, they will be the ones that will be rewarded at the end of the day. So um, I'm just really excited for what I'm seeing so far and it's really a great start like you guys are doing an amazing job Derek I know you had some questions for the the BSKR a while back did you get all those answered um for the most part I did like I haven't gotten into a position just yet um I was still doing some reading of my own because you know it's important to you know do my research so um, yeah, for the most part, Armor, my questions were answered about that. Um, I appreciate you following up. Yeah, because the way that one kind of works is it's kind of everything built into one a little bit. Because, you know, like the Vortex, um, the Groku, um, you know, buys it and distributes it. And um, the BSKR kind of does that all within itself. Because it has such a mm. burn, plus it it pays back its holders. It's a little bit like the PTGC. So if you take a position okay. in the BSKR, um, every time that the bots work, and you know how our LP network is getting crazy, um, and yes. every time something's launched, it's it's um, paired it's paired with it. And those bots come through, and every time they make a transaction, um, it burns it, right? And um, but it also distributes that to the everybody who holds it. And because there's such a high um, pairing, you actually get a a very heavy um, reward because such a high percentage is in LPs, and LPs do not get rewards. You actually get like right and more rewards, and our LP network is so substantial that, and then you get rewards on the rewards. So and it's instant. So because it's not paying a secondary token, there's no sell pressure. So say there's a ten thousand dollars of volume, all those bots running those LPs, it pays the holders instantly so you're instantly also compounding if that makes sense so you get rewards and then you have a bigger chunk of the pie and you get rewarded again on your bigger chunk of the pie um is kind of the the theory and the um with our lp network being growing it seems like every week or whatever um that that was kind of the play i guess on that Yeah, so everything you said made perfect sense. Like, I am actually amazed to hear that you get all of those rewards and benefits. So, all of that comes from just holding that one token liquid? Correct, yeah, you don't have to auto-staked. Just like it's, it's a lot of the functionality of the other tokens, right? But it's different because um, it's paying itself right so it's instant and then that all that buy pressure like kind of like groku has on vortex where vortex 
um, potentially, hypothetically, should have better price performance because of it? Well, all of those functions yeah. are built in already. Um, and so that was the wow. original token of, of this and why everything kind of started was because of BSKR. And, but it needed things. It needed more liquidity. It needed to be able to use these bots. And so everything really was built around it. It's just everybody kind of forgot about it, to be honest. And um, and now it has all those things. And now it's like super undervalued, um, even within our ecosystem, even an ecosystem within the larger ecosystem. And I feel like people are now kind of starting to look at it. And that's kind of why it's been um, it's been taking off. And now you look and you're like, oh, it only has, you know, $13,000 of liquidity with PLS. Well, it does, but it also has 100000 in another pool and 12000 in like eight pools. So the liquidity is there. Uh, it's just not with. But that's why it's also a good thing is because it's a leverage play a little bit on our other tokens. So we have RFX Vortex, which is heavily bonded with PLS. And so those are going to move, hopefully, up with that at a degree higher, hopefully, because of the burn and the rewards and all this. Well, BSKR is a little bit of a leverage play on those because it has more liquidity within the Pulsalorian ecosystem versus PLS. So it's kind of the leverage play plus all the liquidity. Um, I, I definitely think it's super under uh, valued and a lot of it is because we haven't been giving it a lot of attention um, until at least me until lately because now all of a sudden it has everything we always wanted it to have and uh, just need, everybody needs to kind of know how it works a little bit and nobody really does and that's a good thing because it's super under undervalued Yep. And yeah, I was, Armor, I really appreciate it. Oh, go ahead, Pulse Orion. No, I was just going to say, yeah, uh, but if you look at the price performance, it's it's doing really well. It's near all-time high in both uh, PLS and dollar terms. The other good part okay. about it is, uh, like, I haven't, some days I don't even buy <laughs> the, the launches because... I have myself on a hard wallet and my hard wallet's at my office and so on and so forth. I don't always have PLS on my phone, whatever. But ever since I've started stacking up on the BSKR, it's like you hold the native deal and you benefit with every launch. And you're like, even if you didn't buy the launch, you're like super stoked because it just burned a shitload of, of Basker and you're just pumped, you know? So that's... The- <laughs> I don't know. It just kind of gives me some relaxed feeling that I don't have to jump on everything right away to get all these gains. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So first of all, I I, I definitely appreciate your um, detailed explanation as to what um, Basker is and how I actually feel understand it to be that this is like a really crucial and essential element of what makes the Pulsalorian ecosystem what it is because like you said it has all of this built into one and even though everything wasn't in place to start now it is and I know that personally it's something that I wasn't I wasn't aware of it but now I'm just now starting to understand what it is so essentially what i'm saying is i'm definitely going to be taking a position in it tonight because that is for sure something that i want to get involved in while it's still undervalued while it's still early and while i've already been getting integrated into all these other tokens and launches per se and to your point if I end up missing 
a launch or what have you by holding basker it's like i'm already getting the benefits of all the other elements that are within basker which sounds really incredible so i appreciate you explaining all of that for my knowledge and understanding yeah no problem i just knew you had some questions and i, I don't feel like we ever answered them so i just wanted to make sure we talked about it well, now you have, and I am thoroughly educated, so I really appreciate it very much. And then uh, <laughs> we get to the secondary later. Uh, so the light basker, you can actually stake, and it goes into buying basker, so you get the rewards. Uh, Fajari, Pulsalorian can uh, say it better than I can, but um, so it goes into <laughs> SKR, but it's staked, and I think... Light Basker has inflation, so you get all the benefits of holding BSKR, but you also get the Light Basker inflation, and you get. I will, yeah, I, no, I was just gonna. Yeah, I was just gonna add a minor correction there, Armor. So no, that's not the case. So for Light Basker, it's uh, it functions similar to the Basker. There's like a minor burn. But it's more of a, instead of being an auto-staking token with like a high high fee, right? Like a good portion of the, the, that fee for Basker is redistributed. A good portion is burnt, right? It's a 1% burn. Uh, it's a 2% fee. And that's all auto-staking. But in Basker, in, in the light Basker, the PLBSKR case, you have a different kind of system, right? It's, it favors more the single side staking for people who want to experience the staking, but without, you know, any impermanent loss, without, you know, adding to a particular, like, liquidity pool. And uh, it, the way it works, it's, you, you stake, right? There's a, on the website, you can approve your spend limit, and then you stake. But you, there's a penalty once you stake. And that penalty is 13%, starts at 13% penalty in case you are early on stake. And then it decreases by 1% every four weeks, that penalty. So after one year, there's zero penalties for you to unstake. So you can basically unstake at any time, but you get penalized. And that penalty just basically gets burnt forever, right? So it's, it's extremely uh, deflationary as well. So I suppose somebody is staking, they get that single site staking rewards, similar to Hex, right? It's, uh, they're going to get uh, that, that penalty, like 13% of that stake amount is just going to be burnt forever, assuming they un unstaked early for whatever reason. And, and the APR, we've noticed that it's been fluctuating around over 70% a year. So you can easily, even if you choose to, on stake early, let's say you were staked for like four or six months, you probably got a, you know, like 30, 40% APR. And then you on stake, you'll take a 6% penalty that will be burnt forever. So, and this, this LBSKR is also being paired across all of our network. So again, it's a, it's an avenue to enhance arbitrage. Um, and, um, you know, it's just one other opportunity to to uh, invest in, in in our ecosystem. But the the thing with our ecosystem is there's so many avenues for earning uh, that you know it's hard to find like okay where's the best opportunity because it seems like there's so many uh, everywhere, right? So but, but basically we offer you know the auto staking where you're earning uh, yield in the same token, right? There's the single site staking. Uh, there's farming, there's literally uh, PLP staking with the Wojek, and there's also the auto-staking where you get rewarded, you know, the PLS, PLSX, Inc, Hex. So basically, at least, as far as I know, it's like pretty much like close to like all types of earnings, uh, ways to earn, right? Uh, it's possible. So uh, PLBS are definitely very interesting as well. And uh, price performance wise, it's it's been similar to uh, Basker as well. 
I think it's 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 being strength against PLS, which is what we want in the end of the day. And it, it has that incentive to uh, like uh, lock like lock your coins and like not sell them, right? Um, it's it functions very similar to hex, uh, but offers a, a stronger APR, right? Hex is the APR is you know. Um, they say 38% a year, you know, if you're doing that like 10 year stake, but it's, it's, it's actually, you know, it's way less. It's like more like 29%, 28%. Depends on the, the size of your position, obviously, as well. Uh, I believe what Amor was talking about is, uh, when you stake LBS, LBSKR, there is... A uh, chunk of it that is uh, converted to to BSKR. Correct me. No, uh, no, that's not the case. That that was a feature that we we were going to have, but when we moved onto Pulse Chain, we 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 did not have that feature because until we have we had a, a, a like you know an extensive liquidity pool network such as we have right now the feature wasn't going to be as good because it's got it was going to permit you know arbitrage in a way where it was not going to be on a net positive right but ne now that that could have been a uh, a feature that could have been in place now that we have like a stronger liquidity network but but the token works uh works uh perfectly you know and like uh, the, the chart um uh, it's pretty strong. Uh, let me check the chart right now and see how it's doing. One thing I like about BSKR is that it is bonded to every single yield token. Every new release is bonded to BSKR. So if that thing pumps, uh, arbitrage goes crazy, burn goes crazy. And BSKR tends to pump every time there's a new liquidity pool added to it. So, it, it, it's very strong right now. Yeah, yeah, I'd say the same goal goes for um, light BSKR uh, in terms of like it helping the, the liquidity pool network. If you go to postlorian.com slash LPs, uh, for everybody who hasn't visited that section of the website, it gives you a really good insight into how a liquidity pool network is being formed. And then if you jump into the LBSKR pairs, um, it probably can give you an idea of how that uh, liquidity is, is being laid out. Another little uh, Easter egg, a little secret that it's actually out there, but people, they just don't remember it sometimes even i don't remember it sometimes i just go there and straight buy the bskr and pay that six percent slippage so there's a there's a bridge between lbskr and bskr that cuts that slippage to half so if you buy lbskr and buy bskr with that you're getting like a good discount, right? Correct. Yeah, uh, Rukas, you were gonna speak. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, no, it's no big deal. I, I was gonna say one thing uh, to Derek earlier about uh, when he was talking about uh, Ewok. There was a little hint in the Telegram channel where they did a poll on what would be a good name for a token that paid out in Teddy. So that was a, a big hint for me that that it was potentially launching soon. But, you know, I, I'm with you. Like, I I think it's cool to, you know, try out the stealth release and see how that works. And I'm obviously in Telegram all the time looking, looking out. Obviously, I, you know which one I'm looking for whenever that one drops. So <laughs> I'm always in there checking to see what's going on. But uh, but yeah, that uh, that was a nice little you know breadcrumb, you know, little uh, hint that that was about to drop was that poll that y'all put out. So that was basically it. I was just throwing that out there. But like you said, I mean, it, 
obviously we have you know lives, people work, everybody has you know, stuff going on, so you can't check Telegram all the time. But uh, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day as well, with that anti oil feature, buying after the market calms down and and hitting that dip, like you said, you're still early. Like buying in, uh, one of these new tokens within the first few days doesn't really matter which day it is, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like if you're a long term holder. It's peanuts, you know, we're talking about peanuts, basically, in price, so, that's just my two cents. Yeah, exactly, I, I think anything Pulse Chain related, you know, even buying Pulse Chain right now, buying Pulse X, buying Hex, it's all still super too early, and especially our ecosystem, you know, across uh, all, all of our tokens, it's, it seems like it's, it's still too early. Like, even VRX, VRX is already... Close again to its all-time high, right? In, in dollars, um, so so that's what what I'm liking about what I'm seeing about you know our ecosystem. We look at BSKR; it's hitting all-time high in uh, BSKR in uh, PLS and USD terms. Uh, PLBSKR; it's also hitting all-time high in uh, uh, PLS and uh, uh, dollar terms. So you you see a vortex; it's also hitting all-time high in dollar terms. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good chart in PLS terms as well. Uh, same with Reflex. So, so we're literally seeing everything gets stronger. And um, Elixir right now recently also basically did like a, I don't know, 200% price move in a couple of days and added a ton of liquidity. And that, uh, what we're doing is we're spreading out that Elixir across all, all tokens, right? Because Alex Zero has become deflationary re recently, so so yeah, just complementing what you said, everything is, is still so undervalued um, that it's for me it's a, it's a no brainer. You know, all of these tokens are just becoming more scarce over time, and you know as our network grows, they're just gonna pay more yield. So if you position yourself, that position that you have that ent entitles you to some yield is just gonna get bigger over time right so you're just going to get entitled entitled to more yield over time uh as you, you as you remain you know loyal to the ecosystem loyal to that token uh, to your holdings uh go, go ahead on that oh just on the elixir um you know you guys have kind of changed the game on the elixir in this last week so wh what do you feel like the future is uh, for that, you feel like you could expand the farms, or or even um, increase the distribution payout, or or whatever. Or what do you feel like you could do now, or just keep it the same? So, so yeah, we're we're definitely gonna enable more pairs to be paired with Elixir, right? We want to make Elixir a really strong token, right? Because as it's an inflationary token by nature, what people do tend to do is uh, sell their rewards, right? So we want to be able to absorb that sell pressure, right? Obviously, and and the way we're doing that is one by incentivizing, like really, really incentivizing the PLS Elixir pair. Like, so that's they have a twenty x allocation in relation to other pools. So it, it helps sustain uh, that, that, that the sell pressure, right? Because people naturally will tend to add liquidity there for the higher APR. The APR will probably always be more competitive than other pools. And then the other part is that we also have accelerators now burning Elixir. We have Reptilian burning Elixir on every transaction. We have Ewok burning Elixir on every transaction. And that's why we saw basically in the last week, like seven days, literally, right? Because we had those two launches and obviously the, the trading volume is, is higher on those first few days of trading. We saw Alexir basically take, you know, 19% of, of the supply out of the market uh, in just a week. So that, that was insane. And then hence, and then, and then obviously that pool being highly incentivized is also raising the APR for all the other pools, right? So, which in turn is just strengthening the liquidity for the whole ecosystem. And then as Elixir 
it's becoming more sustainable, right? Uh, deflationary and paying yield, but you still get that elixir being minted on a daily basis, right? You you have an ability to also extend that elixir uh, liquidity throughout every single pair uh, of our ecosystem, and it becomes a, a token that becomes very favorable for arbitrage as well because it's a token that has no fees, so it makes it easier for bots to come in and snag some profit, right? Because there needs to be a higher price disparity if you have like two tokens that have some sort of like fee structure uh, than, than if you're pairing with a token that has no fee structure, right? Uh, and especially, um, it, it's gonna really, really help uh, the, the arbitrage and also really, really just enhance the whole thing. Um, so if you don't know, uh, if you didn't notice it, if you don't follow the, the farms, I uh, one, there's tons of opportunities there, um, and especially because of this recent uh, change with Alexir. Uh, first, it being more incentivized, you know, the buying and burning of it. But like PLS, PLSX, V2 pool, which you also earn the trading fees, it's at 60% APR right now. Uh, we have WPLS die pool at over 300% APR. We have uh, RFX, WEF pools, I think it was at 400% APR. So, so there's there's tons of opportunities in terms of APR, right? And then that LX0 is going to get paired with everything too. So one is it's just going to be much stronger. And again, it's just going to favor more arbitrage. So definitely, definitely very interesting what's, what's happening with our yield farming. Um, it's just getting stronger. Uh, which is just going to strengthen the ecosystem as a whole. So, yep, just some 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 uh, side notes there. But as um as a community, you know, as you know, we're forming like this guild of investors, right? Uh, which we trust in each other. We're loyal to these protocols. You know, we want to do this thing. You know, for the next five, ten, twenty years, and keep growing it. As a strategy, we should be definitely with the earnings we're receiving in terms of yield. Let's say I earned some PLS, I earned some some hacks, I earned some teddy bear, I earned some PTGC. Uh, we're we're compounding those earnings, right? We buy up more of whichever protocol we like. Let's say I earned some PTGC, I convert half of that PTGC into RFX, and then the other half I add an LP. So you have these LPs that start like growing if people start doing that. They're basically locking in the, the, their rewards and adding LP, right? It's just gonna strengthen everything. And we should look into like which LPs maybe are close to like a thousand or two thousand dollars and strengthen those first, right? Because we want like the stronger the LP is, you know, easier for bots to come in and then more volume is generated. So we could have, you know, RFX, I think it's RFX WETH LP, for example. This is an example, right? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's a small LP, but if you start growing that to the point that it becomes like a $2,000 LP, $3,000 LP, um, you know, there's more opportunity for arbitrage there. So that's why we enabled that um, postlearning.com slash LPs. Uh, section on the, on the website for people to look into this liquidity pool network and and hopefully see where's where's good for them to add uh, you know some liquidity and obviously the farms as well yeah that our effects uh, we uh, pool is like 190 APR something like that right now pretty good yeah, I thought about ending my, I have a, a pool on the ETH side for uh, W Pulse in the ETH. Well, I'm in that pool, you know, I was, I was thinking of ending that and bridging the uh, ETH over for that particular pool. Yeah, 317% uh, APR, right? So, I, oh, I, shit, I, yeah, I thought. <laughs> yeah, when I look at this stuff like this, is like, for me, it's a no-brainer. I, I see, like, 
why are people not adding liquidity here? Basically, you know, holding RFX, which is strongest token, and holding WE, you know, so and getting a 300% APR, you know, so and then uh, I, 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 I. I think it is, this kind of stuff is kind of like no brainer, uh, but uh, yeah, but you know, people obviously have their personal uh, strategies. Uh, my my personal strategy is is always trying to compound, right? Uh, these protocols are limited supply, and let's say I like let's say I have some reptilian, right? And I earned you know like ten dollars of PTGC over some time. Uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll get the ten dollars end of PTGC. Um, I'll I'll buy five dollars of of more reptilian, so that's gonna earn me more PTGC in the future. And then that other five dollars, I'll just I'll just pair it with, with whichever token I like. Could be with more reptilian. It could be with some something else. And I'll just grow a liquidity pool. That's gonna one. It's gonna you know extend our our liquidity pool network, and you know favor more arbitrage, which will favor more yield, and and I'll, I'll also be earning some trading fees, you know. So, like if everybody's doing that, it's just we're just constantly like removing supply out of the market, increasing our shares in terms of how much yield we can receive. And then we're just strengthening liquidity and strengthening the the extension of this liquidity pool network. Uh, but obviously, people are going to take profits on the top and stuff. And recommended people do take profit, you know, when they see a high uh, spike in price. But that's that's at least what I'm trying to do, you know. And I'll I'll look to like beef up whichever pool that I see, you know, could. It's being more, there's being more bot activity, you know, or that, you know, could easily reach a threshold where it could start attracting some bots. You know, the, the, the fun part about having these LPs is that I actually look forward to these these dips. You know, we were on, on a ride, and I'm like, all right, we need a dip now because I love the payout when we have a nice little 5% dip after a nice run-up, you know. And, uh, you know, before messing around with LPs, you know, in the previous run, I would have never, you know, gotten excited about dips. <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to... Uh, to get excited about your coin taking a nice little dip for other people to get in and also for you to get some nice reflections at the same time so definitely yeah so so one thing i'll be enabling like some more pools in the farms uh for pairing with elixir and then with higher allocation as well you know that will just also extend our, our liquidity pool network. Alex is looking really strong. It has like 20k like uh, PLS, uh, more than 20k uh, right now. I think it's uh, what, yeah, 20, close to 21k liquidity. What are you looking at as far as new pools? You haven't got that far yet. So I was talking to Ra, and uh, basically, uh, whichever, which any of our tokens, you know, I probably pick like the strongest ones uh, to start, you know, and expand it from there. But like RFX, VRX, you know, Caviar, Viax, Ink X, um, and start expanding that Elixir pool. Uh, Elixir, as I, as I said, it's a no fee token. Right, so it favors you know arbitrage bots to come in because it's less of a price discrepancy that it, that it needs in order to see some profit when these price changes, and um, you know it it's a uh, it's a token that's constantly being minted as well, right? So you can keep increasing it, you know, but at the same time the PLS pair is the one that's more incentivized, so that liquidity keeps growing over time as well. I mean, we've been seeing it's it's working, um, you know, like more than perfectly. It's it's crazy. It's literally just about to hit 
20% burn on Elixir. Um, so it's uh, right now it's uh, it's 19.93% of the supply burned. It's literally an inflationary token uh, for yield farming, such as ink. But that now somehow has like a crazy burn. It's become deflationary. So go go ahead, uh, Big Bear. Hey, Paul Slayer and Gilbert, what's up, guys? Uh, yeah, I was just going to comment on the on the elixir burn. I mean, <laughs> I'm having a hard time even comprehending it. It's so wild because you know the reality of it is is that before uh, before Rep was launched, before Reptilian was launched, I think there was about eleven thousand uh, elixir that was that was burned from supply. <laughs> now look at it in, in what three four days, maybe a week. I, I don't know. I've I've lost track of time, but I, I just keep seeing the the percentage burn. Uh, keep climbing, and uh, and yeah, you can we, see that you, you can also three hundred twenty six thousand. <laughs> oh, that's nuts, man! That's like if people. I'm telling you, man, people are not paying attention, and uh, they need to be paying attention. But that's okay. The the more people that don't pay attention, it's the more <laughs> the more that I get to have. So it's all good. But you know, we we need we need the community to be united and participating in mass to uh, to make this movement as powerful and successful as, as possible. So, you know, if everybody wins, we, we all win. And, and, um, you know, the way that, the way that you guys have, uh, coded your protocols, uh, by, by, by rewarding people for actually putting their tokens up for sale into the liquidity pool and we're giving them two extra rewards. I mean, that, that's community, man. That that's like not a whale hoarding his tokens so nobody else can touch them. You know, you're incentivizing people to put their tokens up for sale and you're paying them handsomely for doing it. But that just creates, uh, it's like this, it's like this positive feedback loop. You know, people are getting handsomely rewarded with yield for doing so. Um, but at the same time, they're also making that token available for anybody else who might just be entering the, the post and ecosystem, right? Um, and, and there's tokens to buy. And, uh, and you know, all the buying and the selling that's going on, like I've said before on space, on spaces, you know, every buy and every sell, if you're in the LP, you're getting a little bit more of token A and you're getting a little bit more of token B. And, you know, the LP game is, is for me, the LP game is, is, is a long play. And the same with farming. You know, people do need to realize that when you're eg entering or exiting a farm, um, you know, there's fees attached to that. You know, you're, you're giving up a portion of your coins on the way in and a portion of your coins on the way out. So you have to really be conscious that you're not, you're not chasing green candles or, or shiny object syndrome when you're getting into a farm and then, oh, two days later, you want to pull out because you found your next play. You know, you really have to stay in a farm long enough to realize um, the positive effects of it. So, you know, I'm just, I, I'm loving the way this whole thing is all coming together. You know, the, 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 the besker, that was something that sort of hop, popped on my radar because all of a sudden I saw the buy bots popping up in the, in the, in the telegram. And I'm like, man, somebody's accumulating some big bags of this stuff. And I was like, okay, I need to go, I need to go look at the chart. Cause honestly, I had never, it just totally flew over my radar. I got involved with, with you guys in this ecosystem when reflux launched and, um, I've sort of, as every launch has continued from there, I really haven't gone back to, to what you guys brought over from the East side. So, you know, I, when I saw these buy bot stuff coming through, I was like, okay, bro, like you need to, you need to dive into this and start checking this stuff out. And when I looked at the chart, I just went, whoa, that chart is beautiful. It's like a complete hockey stick. And once you understand how it all works and, and what role it plays in the ecosystem, <laughs> I got to build myself a little bag. So, um, yeah, I encourage everybody. There's a lot of things going on in the Paul Solarian ecosystem, and they're all super, super positive. Um, you know, I like what what Fajari was saying, Paul Solarian was saying about, um, you know, as, as now they're going to start looking at increasing liquidity in some of the LP, in some of the LP, uh, some of the pairs, and that's great because there's this thing in a, in economics that's called the waterfall effect. And, you know, the money tends to, tends to, to be attracted to the LP that's the biggest and the most liquid. And then from there, it trickles down to everybody else. So the more that 
the, the more buffering of all of the other LPs that fall under the biggest LPs, the more buffering and more, more liquidity that can be added slowly over time, it just, cre it just creates this giant economic engine. And, you know, you have tokens like Besker and, and Besker and um, RFX, which are sort of like the juggernauts of, of the ecosystem right now. And, and um, I mean, man, like, you know, we all saw what happened when, when um, certain wallets that bridged over, you know, $22 million worth of, of buy into Pulse Chain and started buying, what the effect of that was not only on the Pulse Lorian ecosystem token, but just across Pulse Chain in general. I mean, you know, <laughs> the heart's law is it's a, it's a real thing, man. And, and, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats. So um, I think there's the future is very, very bright for Pulse Chain in general. But the way that the, the way that these guys have, have uh, written the code, um, incentivize liquidity uh, provision from the community and installed things like the accelerator, um, you know, where it's basically like this benevolent whale, this contract that all it does is buy tokens and or add LP and that's it. Like that stuff's gone forever. You know, it's never going to be seen again. It's, it's like this, um, <laughs> it's like this giant black hole that these tokens disappear into and they're gone. And, uh, so there's, there's just some really cool stuff going on. So. Anyways, that's long-winded. Sorry, guys. I'll shut up now. No, no. No, we, we were trying to warn people a few days before those wallets started buying up. You know, like, we're, I was in the Telegram telling people, now's the time to load up. On, I mean, I wasn't saying it that way, but saying, you know, I'm loading up on all my LPs. Because, I mean, the writing was, was already on the wall. It, it was obvious that something was going down in the next week or two. So it's like, uh, you know, anybody that doubled down on their LPs three days before, you know, when we were in Telegram talking about it, are doing pretty fucking good right now. I know I am. So, you know, like you said, the whole community, the whole post war ecosystem was just on a, on a freaking terror. And, uh, you know, it, I mean, nobody has a crystal ball, but sometimes there's little telltale signs that the market's about to move. And. They were, they were there, man. Like they were there, and it was time to, to put as much in the LPs, you know, stack up the LPs that I already had. You know, there's like too many flags waving, saying "Do this now, or you're gonna regret it." <laughs> you know, like, and it definitely paid off big time. And I, I love my LPs on uh, on Pulse War and ecosystem. They all pay out awesomely. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of shocked that there's you know. Eventually, people will catch on, but, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's great to be early, and uh, I'm definitely glad that, you know, I, I took the opportunity to bridge as much over as I could and stuff everything back up as much as I could last week. Yeah, man, I did the same as you uh, when I saw that, that information starting to come across Twitter and... Um, that the wallets are moving, we're starting to bridge over some obscene amounts. Um, and, you know, I think b before it was bridged over, there were, there were huge deposits going into, into Ave and, and, uh, you know, they were st stuffing millions and millions and millions of, of die and die derivatives, uh, to generate yield, you know? So, you know, obviously speculation, not financial advice, do your own research kind of stuff, but, you know, why would, the wallet, the biggest die holding wallet, why would they be, why, why would that wallet be putting die into, you know, uh, protocols like Aave and, and the different derivatives that, that they offer with relation to die, you know, where you're earning four or five, six, seven percent, uh, APY. What do they plan on doing with that yield? Well, we can all speculate, but I, you know, I take a pretty good guess of what's going to happen to that yield. And that's just, you know, the, the amount of money that that yield just generates on a yearly basis is obscene. Um, so, yeah, as soon as I saw that, I, I started moving a lot of my liquid portfolio over into LPs as well. Um, just because I knew it was coming and I knew that there was going to be a lot of, if the market was going to get frothy, there was going to be some volatility. And Big Bear wants them fees, man. Keep paying me. I love it. 
Yeah, even before those movements, well, there was actually a few wallets just moving small little chunks at a time through the bridge that kind of caught my attention even before the the sack wallet started moving. But, yeah, you know, that that was the icing on the cake right there. You know, once, once those wallets started actually moving funds around. Exactly. We all know what the, the uh, I mean, come on. We, we, we know that th this individual or individuals are not doing this to live off of that interest. They want this ecosystem to do good. And, I mean, they're definitely, it's definitely getting reinvested. No doubt about it. I mean, like you said, not, not financial advice. It could go freaking sideways. Who knows? But it, it seems pretty apparent to me. Well, I, I also like I also like the fact that um, it, it's obvious that there's that there's a methodical approach as to how how things are going to happen. You know, they're not moving all their chips in all at once. You know, they're moving very 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 small clips at a time in. Um, you know, I think what it was like one point one point two three, maybe two million dollars worth over the last several days since since everything arrived has been injected, and then you know it looks obviously they've sat back to me. It looks like they've sat back and they've let they've let the jeets do their thing. Okay, everybody's you know the guys that want to take profit, they're taking the profits. The market's bled off a little bit, which is fine, but it almost seems like they're going to move it up. And then they're going to let it settle a little bit, and they're going to set a price floor. And then they're going to move it out, and then they're going to bleed it off, set a price floor. And eventually, yep. eventually, um, you know, <laughs> what was it? 50, 50 weeks to shake out the weak hands. Well, we're getting close. We're getting really close. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to dump it all into your coins all at once. And sorry, Derek. I, I see your hand up. Sorry, we're talking over. Uh, oh no, no! You guys are good. Like I said, I'm, I'm definitely appreciating um, the alpha from both you, Ruckus, and Big Bear. Um, so I was also monitoring the same thing as far as when we were seeing these big wallets moving funds around. So like that was a signal. And then not to mention um, RH posting what he was posting. So I'm like, something's about to happen. So we saw. That initial pump, which was really nice. And so um, I also started to strengthen my LP positions as well. Like I'm not totally done yet. And again, it's still very early. But um, I had stated that one of my goals was to start building that LP portfolio, which is what I started to do today and um, even yesterday as I was preparing for a couple other launches as well. So, um, <clears throat> so that's really the main thing I've been working on is strengthening my LP portfolio, but going back to the, um, BSKR topic, I'm definitely going to be taking a position into that right now, because like I said before, that's a very critical part of what I need to have in place for like my overall portfolio and just knowing that it has everything integrated into one the way that it does it's just truly incredible to say the least and what excites me even the more is that this ecosystem is still growing like that's how early we are so it's just best to take advantage of all the opportunities as they present themselves because at the end of the day when we look 5 10 15 years down the line like these projects are going to be worth so much money on top of the core RH tokens as well. So that's really what it's all about. It's just building an ecosystem and a portfolio that strengthens the core and just watch all the tides rise together as someone else was saying earlier, but that's what it's all about. And we're all going to win so massively like this. This is just the beginning for us. So I'm excited for all of us for this next cycle and beyond. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's a, it's a good feeling to see other people do good as well, you know, to belong to a community and see everybody 
everybody eat. <laughs> you know, like it, it's it's a good feeling. Huh? I, but, I was gonna yeah. ask a quick question. So from this money that RH moved uh, so far, and he started with positioning himself. Do you know how much has actually been used to buy up like Pulse, Pulse X, Hex currently? Not a whole lot yet. So I think, it, I think it's maybe around 1. Point, mm-hmm. maybe 1. Mm-hmm. 1. 5, maybe 2 million at the yeah. most, but you know, it, it was was one point basically million. nothing really, yeah. right? Yeah, it's not it's like a million dollars. Doing, doing small. Yeah, he's doing making small chunk moves on purpose, but like Big Bear said, he, I mean, it, it would be very stupid to dump all that money Right away into your coins, you know, to you know let you know the exit liquidity for you know the the last few jeets that you know really be exit liquidity, you know, move the price up a lot and really let these guys exit. I'd rather just let them bleed out like like they're doing right now. So I think it's it's a good thing, you know. I don't want them dumping all of it right away. Yeah, and I mean another interesting thing is is one of the tokens that has not yet had any of that philanthropic juice injected into it with was Hex from mm-hmm. Ethereum, so. Yeah, yeah, I it. Yeah. A lot of people are speculating that he's just going to let Ehex die and that his focus is Pulse Chain. That might be the case, but Ehex is going to be fine. It's gonna be. It does suck right now. I, I'm seeing a lot of people who are ending, trying, you know, they have... Forty dollars worth of staked hex that would cost him five hundred dollars to end stake, and it's like, nah, just let it ride, dude. Just you know, there's no point in that one, obviously. But I have some, I have some long stakes that who knows what what it's going to be when they, you know, they start maturing and well, one of them matures next year, and then the end of next year, twenty twenty five, and then twenty twenty six you know, staking live. So I'm interested to see how they that works out when they come due. Not too worried about it because Pulse Chain's working out just fine, you know. If they do wash out, okay. I got copies of them in their state too, so whatever. Totally. Yep. I agree hundred percent. And um I, I, in the end of the day is a game of patience, right? Whoever's most patient, you know, it keeps DCA and keeps holding. He eventually reaps the benefits of, you know, all the people cheating, all the people, you know, selling off and and that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's, it's a long game. Like, you know, I, I just wish I got into LPs earlier. But, you know, I keep saying that, you know, previous spaces, you know, I wish... I would have messed with LPs back in Ethereum back in 2021, 2020. I, you know, was, didn't want to mess with them, didn't know anything about them, didn't even look into them. Thought that they were stupid because you can lose too much of one, to- which is total bullshit. I haven't yet to experience, like, a, uh, I'm playing with Ross where I have, like, destroyed one token over another. That, that just does not exist. At least for me, it doesn't. I could be wrong, but... All of my LPs have balanced themselves out so nicely. All of them, even out, even outside of the uh, Pulse Line ecosystem. But the ones particularly in Pulse Line ecosystem have, have have been like flawless. Like it's great. Like even recently, I mean, yeah, I've I've had my uh, my bags bought up with Pulse recently. So I'm I'm up on Pulse right now because of that nice run we've had in the Pulse Line ecosystem. But it'll balance itself back out. I and mean, I've seen it swing both ways multiple times. So I, I just wish I, I understood LPs years ago. Yeah, the, the LP game is just, it, you just have to be patient and like have a long-term horizon. If you're the type of person that's very impatient and you just try to chase green candles, jeet because you saw something else pop, you're just going to get hurt. You're just gonna yep. leave a bunch of fees behind, and then you're gonna get an impermanent loss. But if you're just constantly, you know, compounding into your LP, you know, and those trading fees are just making your LP grow as well, it's just over time it evens itself out, and it's just, it's just more money on the table. And when, whenever you want to remove profit, the best thing is like you, you're not hurting the price as well. 
Um, exactly. I was going to ask, uh, you know, I see Blackthorn in the chat. Hey, Blackthorn. Um, hey, guys. Thanks for... Yeah, I remember you had, like, some questions, you know, in the TG. I was just going to ask if all of those questions are answered. and But if not, I just, you know, we're here uh, to help you out. I just jumped in. Um, I am, was listening. I'm still researching. But I do have a ton of questions, but I don't know how to put them all together in my... In, the right way, or I don't want to take up the space here and bother other people. So, I is this the right place to ask questions, or not necessarily? No, yeah, feel free to fire any questions away. This is like the best uh, place to discuss, ask questions, okay. and uh, you know, it's our our community time here. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, well, there's two products that have the B S K R B S K R. There's a P and a P L. Um, I cannot figure out the difference between the two. One's the store value, the value, the other one's the single side staking. I don't really understand their, what they do or how they work. I've been reading the website, but it doesn't really give me an idea of what they are. Could someone teach me a bit? Yep, for, for sure. I can uh, give you like some insights. So BSKR, it's, it's uh, th so those two are kind of uh, our core tokens. Um, they're not yield tokens like the ones like Reflux, Vortex, you know, Caviar. And uh, the difference between the two is BSKR has a high fee, you know, when you're buying and selling. And uh, PLBSKR ha has a super low fee. You don't even need to have set any slippage when you're trading. They just have a minor, I think it has a, a minor like 0.25% burn whenever you buy or sell. So it's, it's a little bit deflationary. So... BBSKR has a high fee, so it reflects itself. It auto distributes more BSKR to, to yourself and all the holders whenever somebody transacts. Uh, and then it, it does have a high burn as well. It burns 1% of the supply on every transaction as well. So it's highly deflationary. Um, so it's auto staking, highly defla deflationary. And it's a, a token that's being paired against you know, all of our other tokens. So if you look at our LP section on the website, postlorian.com slash LPs, you pretty much notice that P PBSKR is, it's, it's bonded with pretty much all of our tokens. Not, I don't know if all, but you know, most of them. And then um, PLBSKR, it's, uh, it's, as I said, it's a single site staking. You can stake and earn yield without, you know, any impermanent loss, right? Which we were talking about uh, right now, which is not really impermanent loss, right? If you're doing it the right way uh, over time, that can be mitigated. But, um, so yeah, you stake it. It's, it functions similar, similar to HEX, right? Incentivizes you to remain staked, remove your coins out of circulation, and, uh, and in turn you get some yield, na native yield, and also PLBSKR. So, but it's, it's not exactly like X, it's similar. So it incentivizes you to do at least a one-year stake. Uh, we thought one year is a good long-term, medium-term time horizon for people to, you know, remain staked and that have an effect on removing coins out of circulation. So 65% six, of the supply, it's in a rewards vault and that's what gets dis distributed as inflation. Um, you know, in perpetuity. So there's a percent of that uh, rewards vault that gets distributed every year for the stakers, right? The more people stake, the less rewards overall for the network, less people stakes, the higher APR on PLBSKR. But overall, the APR is ranging around uh, plus 70% a year, which is pretty good when you compare it with like Hex, for example, which does like 30% a year. And it Whenever people unstake, there's an unstake penalty, which is 13%. It goes down, that penalty goes down at 1% per month. So after a year, there's no penalty. So let's say you unstake on month number six, you're going to be penalized in 6.5% or less, 6%. Right? And that penalty gets burnt forever as well. So it also makes this token highly deflationary. Uh, go ahead, Big Bear. I don't know if that helped explain, but if not, we can share it later. 
Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Apostle. And a question I had about um, Besker, and I think I might know the answer to this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask it just so I'm clear. Uh, does it reflect even when it's LP'd, paired with, paired with another uh, token in an LP? Does it still continue to reflect on itself? No. Uh, PBSK, you mean if you pair it like PBSKR and uh, PLS, are you going to get more BSKR reflections? Correct. Uh, uh, no. In that case, no. Okay. So it was, it was uh, you know, all of our ecosystem, whenever we add a new token, we're like, you know, it's, we're more mature. We're finding out stuff that works or could possibly work, and we're introducing new features. So BSKR was our first first token, actually. So, you know, all of these new, more advanced features uh, in terms of, like, uh, adding, like, like, earning yield from adding liquidity, we learned from BSKR, right? Um, and then, uh, so, so, no, but it does reflect itself if you hold, right? So, it tends to, people will tend to remove a lot of it out of circulation, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, if I can make a suggestion for some for something that's future pipeline worthy, maybe might be looking at a at a token that has very similar tokenomics, but still does reflect with, when it's in an LP. Because if you have a token that is still reflecting when it's inside of an LP, the ratio is constantly changing. The R bots have to come and fix it. So, mm -hmm. right? Yep. No, but that that that's why we we have the the farms, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, we could technically incentivize it in the farms. But it's a, a, a lot of it, it's already paired with, uh, you know, a lot of our tokens. So I, let me search for the PBSKR pools while, while we talk. Well, the, the, PB, yeah, the, the PBS, PBSKR and, and PLBSKR uh, pool in the farm is, it's thick, man. It's like, I think, $174,000 in, in LP sitting in the farm. I mean that's that's a really thick, really thick pairing. I think I post I think I posted the picture of it in in the comments. Um, yep. Under the nice. space, yeah. Yeah. As, so does that help uh, answer uh, maybe some of your questions or maybe clarify it a little bit, Blackthorn? It it does it does. Thank you. I do have more questions. Um, I think yeah. they were answered in the Solar Parent Group, but I want to just make sure that I understood it. Sometimes asking the question one more time helps solidify the idea in my mind. Um, so, so I'm looking at the farms right now and I really like the reptilian because I've been pretty in, interested in, in their PDPDGC, PTGC. And so right now on the bottom left of the farms, there's a rep slash PLX. And so if I put Reptilian and PLX in a farm, not in a V, not in a farm, but in a V2 liquidity. Then I take that liquidity pair and I put it in the farm. Does that mean I'm not getting any reflections anymore for earning for owning that token? So yeah, you're correct. So the step that you you take to participate in that farm would be to first go to PulseX V2, and then you'd add you know rep. PLSX liquidity there, and then you're going to receive your PLP, right? Uh, your token that represents your share in the wrap PLSX liquidity pool. So you're going to stake that in turn in the farms. Um, and then you're going to stake, stake it in the, the wrap PLSX pool in the post Lauren farm. And then you're going to start earning Elixir. Uh, and then you can do whatever you want with the Elixir. You can sell it for PLS, you can sell it for something else, or you can choose to reinvest it in whatever token or whatever pool. And uh, you will not earn any PTGC from holding rep or having PLS rep LP or rep PTGC LP, but instead you're going to be earning Elixir and you're going to be earning the trading fees from Pulse XV2, right? Just natural trading fees from people swapping, you know, PLSX for um, rep. So when I stake it on your farm, I'm staking my V2 position, the re reflections go back to, I'm guessing, the stake, and that probably gets spread out amongst other people, or is there no reflections at all? Correct. The, if you're referring to the PTGC yield, 
it means that there's more PTGC yield. Basically, it's the same, but it's just going to be spread out amongst less people because you know a portion of that liquidity and a portion of that rep is now staked in the post Lorian farm through our elixir. So okay. it basically, it's a trade-off, right? Between do you want to earn PTGC or do you want to earn elixir, right? And then. And then you're, it's also a trade-off. Do you want to be paired with PLSX? Do you want to be paired with Pulse? Or do you want to be just holding reptilian liquid on your on your wallet? Okay. okay. And, and truly, there's no right or wrong. You know, some of these farms, it actually could be way more profitable than earning the PTGC yield just by holding reptilian or by providing reptilian liquidity. It truly will depend on the market, you know. Um, some of these farms pay, you know, like 200, 300% APR. And, but then, then again, it, it, it's, yeah, there's no way to know. Well, there's no right or wrong. It's just, you know, personal strategy to what you think it's best for your, your style. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and also another question I did ask, but I wasn't exactly, I, I it didn't come to, it wasn't clear to me. Um, there's a word allocation or alloc. For 20x, some of them are 1x, some of them are 3x. What, what does that terminology mean? How does that function? Yeah, that's just the reward allocations for these farms. So all of these pools in the post Lauren farm, they're earning Elixir, right, for people to stake their liquidity there. Um, so there's Elixir, if you look, it has an emission rate of 0.1 tokens per second, right? So every day it will emit a certain amount of tokens, of Elixir tokens, 0.1 per second, right? How many seconds in a day, whatever, that's the amount of Elixir that's going to be minted in a day. So every day that Elixir is going to be distributed into all of these pools. So assuming like all of these pools had 1x allocation, like there's 40 pools, for, for example, all of that Elixir that's getting minted will get distributed into all of these pools evenly. So divide by 40, whatever amount it gets minted, you know, 1 40th goes to pool number one, and then the, the other portion goes to pool number two and pool number three, and so forth. When you have a 20x allocation on one of these pools, it means that pool receives 20 times more elixir than the pool that has a 1x allocation. So... Maybe if you say it in percentages, it's maybe easier. Let's say there's a hundred percent getting uh, um, like 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 forty tokens getting minted out daily, Elixir tokens. If if all allocations were one x, each each pool would get one token, right? And how however much share of that uh, liquidity you have in that pool in that farm, you'd receive proportional to that like Elixir that's being distributed. But if you have a, f a pool that has a 2x allocation and one that has a 1x allocation, then that pool is getting twice the amount of elixir, right? It's going to receive two elixir instead of the other one that's receiving only one. Does that help make it clear? It does. Does that mean the APR is actually different? Because if, like, I'm here, the elixir PLS, it says 163 APR, but then it has a 20x allocation. Does that mean it's 163? And then the 20 actually boosts it compared to, say, a 1? Or is that not correct? Correct. Yeah, the APR will always fluctuate and always vary between all pools all the time. And it's a function between, like, several factors, you know. How much money is in that pool? Uh, what's the price of Elixir? Um, uh, what's the emission rate of Elixir, right? If you're increasing the emission rate, then you're increasing the APR amongst all farms. If there's like less money on a particular pool, right? Let's say you have 10 pools and you're, you're minting 100 elixir per day, right? Each pool will be receiving 10 elixir. So let's say one of these pools have like $100, right? And it's receiving 10 elixir. That's an APR of like 10% in, in basic terms, right? But now let's say that that pool only has fifty dollars there, and it's receiving you know uh, the same ten elixir. Now the APR is like twenty percent, right? 
So it, bringing it down to all like you know absolute like terms and values. So it, it will fluctuate, right? So there's a lot of Elixir PLS. There's what about 21k in the LP there. So if you'd keep the allocation the same, that 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 reward would de decrease significantly, right? That APR. That's why you have to incentivize that farm a lot more because you want to people to add the LP there first because that's going to sustain any cell pressure, right? But as we see the Elixir itself, it's becoming highly deflationary token. People just, the other protocols are starting to burn it. The accelerator is starting to burn it. So I hope that clarifies. Does that help? I think so. I think so. I, 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 I don't understand how the APR and the allocation exactly work, though. So, when you have a twenty x allocation, does that mean it gets twenty times the amount of Elixir compared to the others? Correct. Yeah, that's correct. So there's only okay. a limited amount of. Uh, maybe maybe I'll keep like a ver the example very simple. Imagine okay, imagine there's a thousand Elixir to be distributed every day. That's what's get minted, right? A thousand Elixir, and it's priced at one dollar. So it's a thousand dollars being distributed into these pools every day, right? And there's only two pools. There's pool one and pool two. Pool one has a two x allocation, and pool uh, two has a one x allocation, right? So pool one it will receive six hundred and sixty six point sixty six dollars worth of Elixir. And pool two would just receive 333.33. Basically, one would receive two thirds, two X, right? And the other would receive one X of this reward, right? So, so assuming there's like a thousand dollars on each of these pools, one APR would be like 66% and the other APR would be 33%. Uh, does okay, that so make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, so the APR is listed on the page. Take the allocation number into consideration. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It will also uh, fluctuate based on how much is staked, based on the price of elixir. So the APR is a constant varying feature. Uh, go for it, Derek. You were going to say something. My help. Oh, yeah, I was just listening to what was being said as I was multitasking and looking at the um, BSKR, which I just took a position in um, a couple minutes ago. So that is all set and ready to go. So now I'm looking at the um, LBSKR. So my understanding is that I have to buy the LBSKR first. And then once it's bought, then I can stake it, and it'll show up in the um, Postalorium website. Like as far as like the active stakes that I have, is that right? Correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Okay, so when I stake it, do I determine the length of which I want to stake it? And the reason I ask is because. I'm reading this 13% penalty on early unsake, which I do not want to do. This is a long-term hold for sure. But I just wanted to make sure that I understood, like, the staking mechanisms for LBSKR. Yep. So once you stake, you're staked, right? And you're going to start earning rewards, you know, if you check, you know, I don't know, um, maybe an hour or two hours or a day, you know, later you'll see, like, some rewards start trickling in. And then... Um, you can unstake it at any moment, right? Uh, there's no lockup. You're not locked. It's just there's just a penalty if you unstake early. So the penalty starts at thirteen percent, and then every four weeks it goes down by another percent. So you know, four weeks from now the penalty will be twelve. You know, if you unstake early, uh, eight weeks from now, two months, it's going to be. Uh, 11 and so forth so after one year there's zero penalty right yeah uh, what we're seeing is that these protocols in general obviously that APR will fluctuate as well depending on the amount of people that are staked so because there's only a limited amount of rewards being issued out every year 
right? So more people staked that will diminish the APR, less people staked uh, that will increase the APR. But we've, seen, we've been seeing it as being paying out close to uh, 70% uh, more or less, you know, uh, APR uh, on PRV SKR. So let's say, uh, like maybe, so it's 70 per, 70% uh, per year, I assume at least within like six months down the line, it probably made half uh, more, a little bit less uh, uh, of that APR. And even if you decide to unstake early and take that penalty, you're probably, you know, well in profit, you know, because the penalty be like something like 6%. But you're probably already made about 20, 20 in terms of interest, right? So, and and then that penalty is essentially being burnt forever. So it's also making this pro protocol, even though it's paying yield, it's making it highly deflationary. Um, and uh, I hope that clarifies. Let me know if if, if not. And uh, so Blackthorn, also feel free to ask any more questions. But I noticed there's a new speaker, a Revolution. Uh, that joined to speak, so I wanted to give him a chance to talk to and ask questions. Oh, real quick, Post Lauren. So, just to answer your question, yes, that does answer my question. And then, real quick, going back to the BSKR, I just bought that and I'm holding it liquid. So, to um, reap all the benefits that Armor was talking about earlier, that's pretty much all I have to do is hold the BSKR liquid since everything that was mentioned is integrated into one. Yeah, but this BSKR, if you're holding it liquid, it will naturally start accruing uh, uh, more BSKR as, you know, there's like activity in the network. Uh, so it's just, it's auto staking. So it's just going to keep accruing more uh, PBSKR. But there's a couple of funds as well that you can um, stake your PBSKR as well if you want to earn Elixir instead. Okay, that makes sense. That was actually a sub question that I had. So um, the auto staking part. So since I'm holding it liquid, um, I don't have to manually do anything else because it automatically does it on its own. Yes, it will automatically compound for you uh, and you don't have to do like anything else. Oh, that's beautiful. I like that. So now I'm just going to take my position in LBSKR and then stake it. And the light bulb just went off because 13% penalty on early on stake. Um, decreased by 1% every four weeks. 13 times 4 is 52. There's 52 weeks in a year. So per what you said, after a year, then there's no penalty for unstaking. So got it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So um, that's all I got for now. So this is very, very helpful. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, awesome, Derek. Yep. Okay, just a question. On the PLDSPR, single side second, can you harvest yield Recompound it in. Yes, you can harvest uh, partially. You don't need to unstake everything. You can just unstake a small portion of your stake. Um, so, and it, that penalty will, uh, when, when it's applied, it's applied depending on how much you earned, right? Let's say if you only earned a little bit, it will be applied both to your interest and to your principal. But let's say if you earned a lot of interest already, where that penalty, uh, when applied, you know, it, it does not necessarily need to touch your principal. It will touch only your interest. So, <clears throat> yeah, but but you can early on stake at any moment. There's just that penalty that diminishes, you know, uh, throughout the okay. year. And okay. then uh, you can also unstake partial. You can unstake just one percent of your. Stake. Yeah, and I was just wondering if I if I made a you know five percent yield that month, could I pull that yield out without any penalties? But it's like it's it's all locked up in the penalties. Yeah, yeah. So if you try but after twelve after twelve months, I could just keep pulling the yield if I wanted to without any penalties. Yeah, you can pull like just partial uh, at any time. It's just you'll get the penalty applied, you know, to that whatever you're pulling out. If you're if it's before one year, but if it's after one year, you can keep pulling it out with no penalty, you know. So technically, if you're think uh, one year, right, uh, you can start reinvesting that, and it just and you're not getting penalized for harvesting that interest, you know. Would my new let's say after, let's say I rolled it for a year, I pulled out the interest, and then I rolled it back in the compound would that new money also be subject to the 15 percent penalty yeah yeah yep 
Okay, yeah, so the contract recognizes new money and old money. We'll or whatever. A mistake, right? I will create a new stake, right? Oh, you'll create it. Okay, got it. You'll create a new stake. Yeah, you can't add the old stake. I, I follow now. And then uh, Revolution, I, I think you, you joined the, the speaker. Oh, yeah. Um, thanks for, uh, for uh, giving me the time, man. I just... Um, I I just I just been listening and uh, absorbing everything you guys have been saying uh about LPs is very interesting um, cuz I do have a long-term perspective so I like to incorporate that I'm more of a buy and hold person but is it LP is your LP a, um just just a straight LP or is it like a more a, a version is there a version 3 where you can put in your limits or is it just one is just a straight LP uh, no, all, all, all of our LPs um, there that we incentivize and we um, hand out some yield if you're providing liquidity, they're based off on uh, Pulsex V2, right? And uh, I know some people use 9 millimeters, which has the V3 option where you can, you know, narrow the range of your LP. But, you know, we, we wanted a one, you know, like Pulsex V2 is the strongest liquidity. You know, it's our age product. Um, it's, you know, products that we ourselves are invested in, you know, post X. So we wanted to, you know, incentivize our age ecosystem, our age liquidity pools, and thus also increase our, 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 just enhance, you know, the post X ecosystem, the pulse chain ecosystem, right? So that, that's why we chose to do it with, uh, Pulse X. So, but basically, all of our LPs, when you're providing liquidity, it's with an earning something in return. Is with Pulse X V2, which you also earn the trading fees. You know, aside from any yield, being it like a yield token or be it being in the farms itself. Okay, so and and um, I mean, I've been listening to uh, the whole tokenomics and, and so forth. Is uh what what's the best what's the best way to get started with your with your protocols uh like what's the what's the simplest way just to get yield the the easiest most um I guess uh so I I'll give an answer and then okay. everybody like I know Big Bear Rukas you know Muji uh there I know you guys can all chime in but. Uh, the, the tough part of post learning ecosystem is just there's so many avenues to earn and so many opportunities on how to you know get some some sort of yield that it, it's hard to decide truly so you have tokens such I'll just give a brief like overview you have tokens such as BSKR which is out of staking it kind of you earn more of the token itself you have PLBSKR, which is single site staking. You have the yield farming, where you could earn Alexir, and then you can do liquidity pool uh, type of staking. And then you have our yield tokens, where you can earn basically either through adding liquidity or just by holding the token itself. You can earn PLS, PLSX, HEX, INC, DAI, PDAI, Teddy Bear, PTGC, HOA, Texan, so, so, uh, even P Pepe, so there's truly a lot of avenues to earn. So whether you're more of a holder or more of a liquidity provider, or you like more yield farming, or you like to accumulate, you know, RH tokens. I'll, I'll just give my personal strategy. I, I love the yield farms. Uh, I'm more of a buy hold compound DCA type of guy. I I don't like trading as much. Because uh, compounding is just um, this is the way to go to me, you know. I assume that you know people are gonna mess up, fumble their bags, lose the money, and if you're being patient, you know that money tends to come back to you, and it also just helps out the ecosystem as a whole, you know, become stronger, uh, adding liquidity, etc. And but I love um, you know the RH tokens, so I love accumulating some reflux, accumulating some vortex, accumulating some inkx. But and then obviously I'll look at into what I think it's undervalued at the moment, you know. So if I see one token that has some sort of yield that I like and I think okay, people are kind of like leaving this one behind, I'll buy it because you know markets are always you know going up and down and people 
people love chasing green candles, but you should be chasing what's undervalued, right? So that, that's just my, my two cents. But it, it really is a, your personal strategy. Um, what, are, what, what type of token you want to earn? I would ask Revolution what's his favorite token, so I could answer the question. Pulse. Pulse is my favorite token. Then get RFX and just hold it or put it in LP and two times your rewards. That's what I do. I put it in LP and I love gaining my Pulse. And uh, my LPs are, are, are awesome. They perform pretty well. That's just my opinion. But, you know, I, I'm the same as you. I like Pulse. My whole objective is to obtain more Pulse. So out of all the ecosystem, I do participate in all the coins. But... I do prefer, my favorite is obviously RFX, I think I made that pretty clear, but uh, yeah, that one, you just buy and hold, if you don't want to put in LP, you're still going to gain pulse, just by holding it in your wallet. Okay, if so you do the LP game with uh, RFX, you earn the, the PLS from the LP fees, and you still earn 2x the PLS rewards, so... If you're the LP guy, that's the way to go, but you can always hold it. Yeah, our RFX is also our strongest token currently, right? Uh, not saying that could change in the future, but currently is the strongest one. Yeah. So I asked the question in the Telegram group and someone answered me, but I'm going to throw it out here for everyone to hear. So let's say you have 32 million pulse and you're thinking about either running a validator or you take the 32 million, you know, half of it into reflex. To RFX and then drop all that that 32, 32 million worth of volume, and obviously 50 50, into the V2 pool. Are you going to make more rewards running a validator or running here? I, I, I know you guys can't promise anything. I'm just I'm guessing what people's opinions are. I, so I, I've been in RFX since so, it came online, and I'm earning more than a validator. I can guarantee you that. I'm not just shit talking i'm earning more than what the average validator makes and then i don't have to deal with worrying about getting penalized as a validator i just freaking hold my lp and mind my own business you know what i mean like there's a lot of you know being a validator there's still things you have to do you have to make sure your node's running properly i don't have to do shit you know <laughs> except for hold my lp you know and and earn rewards but i have absolutely earned more than a validator with with if if i were to t i have a little more invested than that but in the beginning i basically put about a validator's worth into lp to see how it would work and it's it's definitely more advantageous for me so a follow-up question is what historically has been more profit the most profitable historically so far uh, prof profitable in terms of what, in terms of price performance, or in terms of yield, or in terms of uh, what? In terms of price performance. Well, that's a hard question to answer because all these tokens have all come out, have launched at different times. So, um, you know, they're, they're okay. I'll, I'll shorten it then. Yeah. What right now? What what has the highest? What's the best performer right now? Um, again, that's a really hard question, but I can I can give you some insights. For example, PBSKR is currently in all-time high in both PLS and dollar terms. A PLBSKR is an all-time high, or really close to it, in both PLS and dollar terms. A Vortex is an all-time high in dollar terms. A really good chart when you look at it in PLS terms. Uh, I think Reflux was RFX was the most explosive uh, like uh, launch that we had in two weeks. It reached like a million dollar cap with 130k in liquidity, and then that that launched pretty much from zero. Um, but obviously, you know, once things rise that fast, they take a huge dump, and then it dumped like 90 percent, and it climbed all the way back up already at like a 50 percent. Uh, drop down uh, from that all-time high, but still with like stronger liquidity. Uh, it has close to 145k liquidity now, and uh, there's a lot of other tokens which were uh, much smaller in liquidity and cap. So those I wouldn't 
factor them into the equation. But Caviar also had pretty explosive launch, and I think it reached almost you know a million nine hundred k or close to a million dollar cap in in under two weeks as well. And obviously it, it dumped a little bit. Um, so so they, they they're all very very like very very good in terms of price performance i think anybody who got in like day zero they they they, they are like, certainly making a lot of money in terms of like yield and price performance but it's hard to assert anything you know it's just always not financial advice you know you have to like diversify choose your strategy or what you like the most but uh, but rfx has been like the strongest one i'd say uh, and vortex that but that's just my opinion people what, might what, okay what is, so since i'm i'm kind of leaning towards rfx right now because of the pulse the pulse aspect of it and uh so what are the tokenomics of rfx like what how does it produce yield is just the lp that produces the yield or is there some type of mechanics that help it um, I'll answer, and again, guys, feel free to chime in in case I missed something or you have a different perspective. But I think unique uh, feature revolution about our, our ecosystem, it's one, it's, you know, everything we're doing is being developed from scratch, you know, and we're always thinking of ways of creating synergy between all of these tokens where they all benefit each other in some way or form. And uh, so our effects like benefits and features that make it really unique when it comes to uh, this yielding PLS is that one, there's not many avenues to yield PLS. Either, either you're a node, uh, either either you're uh, running a node, right? There's a couple of competitors, but if you look at a price chart in, in uh, PLS terms, uh, RFX is out, outperforming those competitors. Uh, encourage any anybody to check that on that screener. Just compare the charts in PLS terms, uh, and you see you're probably earning more PLS wise. But most of our tokens they earn earn yield from trading fees, right? Uh, so on whenever somebody buys or sells, there's a fee, uh, and that fee uh, it gets accrued in the contract, and then it gets redistributed to all the holders when it reaches a particular threshold. And it, and it will get distributed usually on uh, sell transactions. So the protocol also is designed to front run the seller to get the best price uh, for distributing that pulse to the holders. And, uh, you know, giving giving holders, you know, people who are loyal to the protocol, like the, the, the basically the best price. So yield is generated from the fees, uh, but unique feature is that if you're an LP provider, you're also earning those fees and you're actually earning 2x the amount of fees. So the amount of shares in the system, uh, if you're an LP provider, you're gaining twice the amount of shares. Um, the protocol also has a burn feature on, uh, on whatever somebody's buying and selling. So portion of these tokens, they're getting burned forever. So it's, it's deflationary, right? So once you snag a share in the system, as people continue transacting, there's only going to be less of these shares in the market that earns you PLS yield. So, assuming you're not selling overall and demand is constant, you'll always be earning more PLS yield over time, right? Because your shares are going to, your participation in this ecosystem is just going to grow because it's just getting harder to acquire these shares. Uh, another feature is we do have a, an accelerator, right? Which is Basically, another account that acts as a holder and accrues, you know, some PLS, but it's actually a programmed benevolent whale type of thing. It just uses that accrued PLS to buy more RFX and to add more liquidity into the protocol, and it's basically burning that liquidity and burning that RFX forever. So we've seen that it, RFX has already burned close to 19% of the supply something like that and uh it, it will basically continuously uh add more buy pressure positive buy pressure more liquidity and uh keep keep growing uh keep making the token stronger um and we we have our effects you know we have this web of lps which is basically to incentivize 
arbitrage, right, which would incentivize uh, this yield being generated. And so far, I think since launch, we've distributed over 607 million uh, posts to holders. And uh, yeah, and it burns already 19%.